Welcome back to another video on the channel. We're reaching the business end now of the ATP World Tour Finals. We've got two fantastic semi-finals in store tomorrow. Novak Djokovic against Dominic Team and Rafael Nadal against Daniel Medvedev. It's been a fantastic week of tennis. Um, I mentioned earlier the week on Twitter that I don't think the sport is the same without a crowd. I don't think there's been the same intensity there in some matches um, as what there would have been with the full O2. But it's still been a fantastic event regardless. We've had some quality tennis um, and we're going to have two fantastic semi-finals and a great final um, to finish off a successful week. So I just thought I would preview the two semi-finals and give me predictions, although I think Djokovic and team is pretty much a 50-50 and I do have a slight edge for Nadal over, over Medvedev, which I'll explain um, in the video, but both matches are really, really close and it'll come down to a few points and who plays better in the big moments. But kicking things off, I'm going to look at Daniel Medvedev against Rafael Nadal in a match that I think is just a brilliant matchup. Um, Nadal's won two out of three matches so far this week, dispatched a below bar, a below par Andrea Rublev in straight sets, lost a coast thriller to Dominic Team, a match that was decided on two tie breaks and really could have went either way. Um, the team just sort of stepped it up on those tie breaks and a couple of points did decide it. And Rafa played very well against the final set to pass for the majority of the match, um, dominating the final set to secure his place in the semi final. I've been very impressed with Rafa so far this week. Um, he seems really motivated, he's got great intensity. He's never won this event, um, and for me, it looks ready to make a huge challenge for the title this week. Every match he's played in, um, he's played very high quality tennis, very consistent as well. Um, I think. All players this week have been susceptible to lulls in their games and having offsets, whereas Rafa hasn't really. Um, you know, he did drop that one set against Sitter Pass, but that was down to Sitter Pass playing a fantastic game at 4 4 um, and serving out the set. Um, for Rafa, he just looks pumped. Um, he's got the fist pumps on show. He's looked very zoned in. He's producing his best tennis win required. Um, and I've just been really impressed with his game on the court. You know, he's serving as well as I've seen for a long, long time. His forehand's in flow. The two together um, spell danger for any opponent in the world. He's won two punches, the greatest that we've ever seen in the sport, and he makes it look so easy. Rafa, for me, though, um, has been very impressive around the net. Um, you know, on a quick hard court, he likes to come forward. He likes to be aggressive and keep the points short at times. Um, just throw his opponent off and mix it up. And he's deft touches and... You know, quality put away at the nets have been very impressive, and I think people underestimate underestimate how good of a volley Rafa is. I think with Rafa though, he can play behind the baseline, which allows him to defend, read the player better, but he still develops that pace, precision, top spin. So he isn't really at a disadvantage from playing deep. He obviously does step in and look to rip forehand winners, attack the net with conviction. Um, when you give him the opportunity, but with Rafa he can stand a foot or two back behind the baseline, which allows him to get a good read on the player, allows him to get in a good position to play the shot, and as I say, he can still develop pace and pretty much anywhere on the court, he's got that ability and the strength, so he's got that big advantage of having just an extra split second to set himself and position himself um, for the ball, and we know he's got fantastic footwork that he's had throughout his career. Rafa's just timing his attack so well. Um, I think he's being patient, he's rallying from deep, his variations in depth are on point this week. Um, and as I say, when he gets that short ball and the attacks at the point, is pretty much over, which makes him an incredibly difficult player to beat. I think it would take someone like Medvedev, who can rally from the baseline. Medvedev's also very patient. Um, he can defend the heavy ground strokes and you know counter punch and bide his time. I think Rafa up against a player like to pass as Verev um, is a match made in heaven for, for Nadal. Um, Nadal's just going to blow players out of the court, and Sitsa Pass and Zverev aren't the types of players that are going to extend rallies and um, wait for you know, Nadal to go big and have that ability to counter punch. You know, Zverev and Sitsa Pass like to keep the points short, and when they come into the net, um, Rafa's great at passing, and Rafa can just fight fire with fire all day and probably out hit anybody in the world. So I think Medvedev's probably a bad matchup for Nadal stylistically. The thing about Nadal is that he's not making errors. You know, Djokovic was making 
lots of loose, unforced errors against Mavia the other day. Nadal hasn't done that yet in this tournament, and I don't expect him to do it from the semi-final stages. I expect him to keep improving. Just moving on a little bit about Medvedev. Um, he's looked great so far. He won the Paris Masters title um, and he's 2-2 so far this week. And the reason I am posting this preview before his match against Schwartzman is that I don't think that match has any bearing on his performance tomorrow. I think he'll adopt a completely different style tonight. Um, again, Schwartzman looked to keep the point short and be aggressive rather than extend the rallies, which he would usually do. And I think he'll play a completely different style of tennis um, against Nadal tomorrow. So whether he wins or loses tonight, it wouldn't have changed my opinion at all uh, on what will happen tomorrow. He's on a very good unbeaten streak. You know, he won that Paris Masters title. Um, he's 2 out of 2 so far this week and I expect him to beat Schwartzman and I comfortably so he'll go into this match full of confidence. And a confident Medvedev at the top of his game is dangerous. You know, we know he's got that fantastic first serve, a very quick motion that can see him race through service games. He'd done it against Djokovic of the day. He broke down Djokovic with brilliant defence and counter-punching. Um, he beat him in his own game. The game was very in the first round of group matches. He was very even adopted an approach to attack the net. And Medvedev continued to counter-punch, pass him with fantastic passing shots um, and backed it up with that huge first serve, serving many aces, hold and serve, and won that one in straight sets. And... With Djokovic and Zverev, um, he's beat them both at their own games. Um, both tried to rally from deep and tried to out-hit him and wear it wear down his defence, but he doesn't break, um, he doesn't make mistakes. He, his defence is absolutely rock solid. I think he's very deceptively quick. Um, he's got fantastic reach. He's got great position, I think, and he gets great depth on his shots um, and he mixes it up well between depth and getting the ball back in court and then counter punch and slap the forehand winners um, he does that very very well and as soon as their his opponents start to change their style like Djokovic and Zverev did uh, then it's sort of 1-0 Medvedev and it gives them that mental edge and I think Djokovic of the day got sick of losing long baseline rallies tried to go to the drop shot and that didn't work either um, which saw Medvedev win in straight sets so after all that um, as I say it's very very close match I wouldn't be surprised at all if Medvedev won, but there's two reasons why I picked Rafa to win this one. I think in the long exchanges, Rafa just has the heavier ground strokes um, and he can initiate rallies. And although Medvedev is a great counter puncher, Nadal's not missing his targets at the moment and he reads the play so well. Rafa's also a risk taker. Um, we've seen it before in semi finals and finals. Rafa doesn't lie down, he doesn't be dominated, and he goes out there and caught with an aura. Um, with a will to win, he backs the forehand and the backhand, um, he's playing so well, serving well, and I just think Rafa might have that little bit extra firepower um, against Medvedev. Also, Medvedev's a typically slow starter, um, he has been throughout his career, he didn't start well again the day against Zverev, um, you know, he did obviously turn that one round thanks to a few Zverev um, double faults, but you can't really give Rafa Nadal a lead. Um, he's a great front runner. I think he's won 71 of his last matches when winning the first set. So if you lose the open set against Rafa, um, good luck turning that one round. But that's all. Um, it's very little to split them. You know, Medvedev's been fantastic so far this week and played some of the best tennis that we've seen. But for me, Rafa just looks so motivated and like he's ready to win this title. In a dangerous Rafa who's serving well. And hitting the forehand as good as ever um, is a very dangerous opponent and I expect Rafa to come through this one probably in three sets. Moving on to Dominic Team and Novak Djokovic. Um, obviously Dominic Team's enjoying the best career of his year. Um, of his career, sorry. He's reached the final of the Australian Open. He's won the US Open. He's reached the semi-final the ATP Finals. And the way he played against Nadal um, was sort of a statement in especially came to me that I don't see anyone living with Dominic Team if he can replicate these sort of performances. You know, there's every part of his game at the moment just seems to be at its absolute best. You know, the forehand and the backhand are mixed up perfectly. He's got the great backhand slice where he can take pace off the ball and change the pace. Um, keeps it very low, skiddy across the net. He's got that wonderful backhand that he can go cross court, deep, wide. 
hits winners for fun. Um, his forehand is massive. It seems to be his go-to shot, um, especially in the tie breaks and around the business end of sets. He really likes to get on that run around forehand and slap them cross court. Um, he's serving very well at a very high first serve percentage. Strong around the net. Um, happy to go deep, long exchanges. He's one of the fittest guys on tour. He seems to be in an incredibly good place on and off court. And mentally he's improving all the, all the time as well. I talked about this the other day that I think the more team experiences and the more he plays, the better he's getting. You know, he's led Jokovic 2-1 in the Grand Slam and lost that one. I'm sure he'd have learned of how he could have closed that match out better and, you know, brought his best tennis in them fourth and fifth sets. Um, against Sasha Zverev, he was two love down in the US Open final. Obviously came back and won that one. In the semi-final, he won two tie breaks against Danny Medvedev. Um, so he's experienced now of coming back from seemingly losing positions. He knows how to win a Grand Slam, he knows how to win these big events and how important it is to produce your best tennis in the biggest stages. And I think, you know, Dominic Team is a player at the peak of his powers. Um, he's improving all the time, he's full of confidence and just playing truly outstanding tennis. I mean, some of the points that he won, some of the tennis that he produced against a rampant Rafa in, that tie, in them tie breaks of the day was just a joy to watch uh, every time he steps out on court. I'm very excited to watch him um, because you just know he's going to produce such a quality performance. On Novak Djokovic, you know, Djokovic is my favourite player and I still stand by. I think he's the best player in the world. I don't think he's had the greatest year of his career. Kicked it off very, very well. 26 match unbeaten streak, winning the Australian Open. Came back um, from lockdown, winning the Cincinnati. He won Royal Masters, but did get to score a five in the US and get beaten the final of the French. So he, he started a very successful 2020. Um, but he hasn't set the world alight yet at the ATP finals. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he turned it on um, in the semis and final. We know Djokovic is a player that seems to peak at the very best times. Uh, but so far in the group matches, I don't think he's particularly looked fantastic um you know it it was a work my performance against Diego Schwartzman it was always a good matchup for Djokovic um, we know Diego struggles against the very best players on a hard court and Djokovic really bossed that one from pretty much start to finish the performance against Medvedev was very below par I mean I know he probably prioritized today's match against Verev and you could see that in the two performances that he certainly was more up for the day but the performance against Medvedev for me was a little bit worrying. Um, the long exchanges were dominated by Medvedev. Um, he really beat Djokovic at his own game. The forehand and backhand were both breaking down um, frequently and very easily, you know, making a lot of loose errors. But he is serving well. Um, he served well today, particularly at the back end of that second set in the tie break and in the first set. And Djokovic for me, it's pivotal that he makes that first serve. Um, he constructs so points so much easier. Um, off the back of a first serve uh, with a heavy ground stroke, attacking the net, gets him inside the baseline, allows him to hit them clean winners and forehand and backhand and really start timing the ball. Uh, but when he does, doesn't does make the first serve, he does seem to struggle to hold his serve. And Sasha's very had a few chances today, uh, particularly in that second set, but Jotovic did manage to, manage to fight him off. Um, so Jotovic, he's probably been a 7 out of 10. And, Certainly not playing his best tennis, but would it be a surprise if he peaked and produced a masterclass tomorrow? Absolutely not. We know he's capable of doing this and he, he'll want to win this title. But in terms of making a prediction, I do think it's 50-50. It's literally a toss of a coin. I think he'll win this one. Um, but in my opinion, from what I've seen so far this week, I think the safer player has to be with Dominic Team, and I I do think Team will win this one. I think it'll be very close, and as I say at the start of the video, and this goes to the Rafa match as well, that it'll come down to who plays the biggest points the best. Um, I expect tie breaks and very close sets. It's all down to who keeps the nerve and who can produce the best tennis at the biggest moments. But for me, Dominic Team is having a fantastic year, improving all the time in every part of his game. He seems to be where he probably wants it to be at the moment and I think he's the informed player um, going into tomorrow's semi-final but as I say Djokovic is quite capable of turning it on and beating anybody in the world so it's a match that really could go either way but I'm going to go with Rafa Nadal and Dominic Tink to make Sunday's final I will be doing live commentaries on both matches tomorrow so I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find them 
I'll be talking about both semi-finals on the lead up probably on my Twitter account as well if you do want to follow me on there but in the meantime thanks for watching another video please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one